few more minutes to respond. And what I'm going to do while we wait again is I'm going to talk a little bit about the materials that we're going to use for our experiments today. So you're going to need some paper, um, an eight and a half by 11 inch uh, sheet or two will do you. Um, we're, you also need either, you, you need some straws of different, um, uh, different diameters, but if you don't have straws, we'll show you how to, um, to do without. Um, and you will also need some tape. I've got my, my tape dispenser here. Um, you'll also need some scissors. Um, and I think that's about everything you'll need today. So let's, let's go ahead and get started with how airplanes fly. So here's a picture that I've drawn that talks about the four forces of flight that are the four forces that um, operate on an airplane. So the, the ones that go up and down are gravity goes down. Most people are pretty familiar with gravity. It, it's, it's what makes things fall when you let go of them and they fall to the ground. And the, uh, the, the, the heavier something is, um, the, the more gravity there is. And so gravity is a reason why when you fly on an airplane, why they limit how much uh, luggage you can bring. Because the, the, the more luggage you bring, the more gravity. And then it takes more fuel to overcome that. Um, now lift is the opposing uh, force to gravity and the way that lift works is when the airplane is going through the sky very fast the wind blows over the wings and the wings are designed such that when the air blows over them the 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 air causes the air pressure on the top of the wing to be less than the air pressure under the wing. And that's a phenomena uh, called Bernoulli's principle and that causes lift. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about Bernoulli's principle, I'm going to be covering that at three o'clock today. Um, now you might ask, what is the thing that makes the, the, the wings rush through the air so quickly and make the air go up over the wings? Well, that's thrust. And thrust is created by the engines. Now, I'm an engineer, I'm not an artist. So these, these black circles represent the engines and they, they produce thrust that pushes the airplane in the direction that the, the plane wants to go that creates the lift. And so as it does that, the, 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 the plane goes up. Now the opposing force to thrust is drag. Um, you might also think of drag as um, uh, uh, wind resistance. And I think everybody has probably felt wind resistance um, in one form or another, either when you're walking against the wind in, uh, on a windy day, um, if you stick your fingers or part of your hand out the window um, when you're in the car, you can feel that wind resistance. And what you might notice is if you stand against the wind, if you stand like this and you spread your arms out and you're facing the wind, you feel the wind resistance more than perhaps if you stand sideways and, and, and there's less of you to have the wind push against. Um, and, that's, and that's why cars are shaped the way they are, why the windshields slope, why airplanes are shaped the way they are. We're, we're trying to reduce the wind resistance as much as we can. So let's, let's move on to our first experiment, which is paper rockets. And the paper rocket, I'll kind of give you an idea of what it's going to look like when we're done. As I'll, I'll start it out so that you kind of know what you're aiming for with this experiment. This is what it looks like when it's finished. There's the rocket, which has got your, your wing or your airfoil. It's got a straw of a large diameter, which we can replace with a, a, a paper tube that we can build if you don't have a large straw. This larger straw is a, it's a shaped straw that um, I got this from, from Kroger. It's a little bit bigger diameter and you can see that it's a little bit bigger diameter than just your normal everyday drinking straw. 
again, if you don't have one, don't worry, we can, we can make a, a larger diameter straw. And then, of course, just a regular drinking straw. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to make the, the wing for the airfoil. So you want to cut a piece of paper. Um, I've cut this one about three inches by three inches. Um, the exact size is not super important. Probably the most important thing here is that it's pretty square. Um, now the, the other thing, the other thing that, um, uh, that I want to talk about as, as we go through our experiments today is there's a lot of times when you do experiments, sometimes they work right away, sometimes they don't. And there's a lot of factors that could cause you to be successful or unsuccessful. And that's kind of part of being an engineer, kind of part of being a scientist and a programmer, is when something doesn't work, you figure out what the factors are that, that are causing the trouble. And in fact, many times, um, that's the hardest part of being an engineer, is, is figuring out what went wrong. So you're going to take your piece of paper and we're going to fold it. And I've drawn some lines so you can see where you're going to fold. The, again, what you could see from my example is the most important thing is you want a nice sharp point um, at, the, at the top of your wing. So you're going to fold from this top point to roughly about halfway between here you anymore. So now what you can do is you can fold on that first, that first line. And I'll pause here just to give you a minute to catch up. Okay. Why don't I give you just a second to catch up while I put Harry, the very loud dog potty in another room. So now what you'd like to do is you want to do the second fold. So as you can see on this one, I drew two and this one, you're going to do the second fold exactly the same way. Now what you kind of want is you want a little bit of overlap on these two folds. And you can see I, I drew a dashed line so that um, you could kind of see how much overlap. It's not super important how much overlap you have so that just that you do have some. Because what we're going to do is we're going to tape this. So I put a little X where you want to tape it. Now there's one important factor, remember another factor in success or not success, is you want to put that tape so that it, it closes it, but you don't want the tape to go over this edge. You don't want to tape that closed to the back side of it because what you've just done is you've made a little sleeve for your bigger straw. And that's important. You don't want to tape that closed. You don't want any tape hanging over the edge because that might keep the, um, the, the paper rocket from taking off because it's sticking to the base of the, uh, the, the stand that you're going to be taking off from. So now you've got your airfoil all ready. So now what we're going to do is we're going to work on a little bit of the infrastructure of what makes this paper rocket take off. So again, I've cut... Um, Oh, I'd say it's about three inches. The exact length isn't super critical, but anywhere over two and a half inches to maybe four inches is going to work just fine. So I, I used my scissors and I, I cut the straw to that length. Now again, if you don't have that larger diameter straw, there's an easy fix for that. What you can do is I just took a piece of paper and I just wrapped it around my straw okay and then I taped it let me get my tape and I taped it closed okay and now you've got a larger diameter straw that your drinking straw is going to slip through which will work just like the one that I bought from the grocery store okay now the, the next thing that you're going to do to your larger diameter straw is you need to seal one end closed uh, because when you blow into the straw the air is going to push into the inside of that straw and that's going to um, uh, and, and if you don't tie it or if you don't tape it closed the um, the air will escape and it will 
the, your, your rocket won't work well. Oh, and it looks like Sarah, uh, who is from Seattle, Washington, um, and also she has, oh, I'm sorry, Sarah has flown to Seattle. She's flown to Virginia, Richmond, Virginia, and Washington, D.C. She's quite the traveler. Um, fun fact, my daughter and Harry, who's the dog that you saw at the beginning of this video, Harry is from Richmond, Virginia, and he's visiting and staying with me this week. So now what you want to do is you, you, you want to take the end of that straw close. So just pinch it, take a piece of tape, take a piece of tape while you're pinching it, and just fold that tape over, make it kind of neat. Okay. Now what you're going to do is you're going to put that big straw inside that envelope or that, that sleeve that you've made. Okay. Last step. Take your regular drinking straw and put it inside that big straw. Now don't really jam it down in there. Make it kind of nice and loose. And because if you if you if you really jam it down in there, it's gonna get stuck and this thing won't won't fly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate for you. And uh, before I do that, um, I want you to kind of think about. Uh, what happens when I blow into the straw and um, and I, I want you to think about how this this little rocket gets thrust okay and then I also want you to kind of think about the lift so this thing um, see whether it falls straight to the ground or if it does something else because of thrust and lift okay are you ready <laughs> there it goes so let me see if I can get that back and I'll do it again. It flew kind of far. So that's why I had to actually stand up to go do. So let's start our paper airplane. And we'll come back to the whole idea of why this paper rocket flew. Okay. So again, I'm going to show you the finished product um, so that you can see what we're trying to do. This is the goofiest looking paper airplane I think I've ever seen, but surprisingly, it works. Or at least if you get all the factors right, it works. So again, what you need for this is you need a, just a regular drinking straw and you need two sheets of paper. Okay, now I, I just cut the two sheets of paper about an inch across and about eight and a half inches wide. Um, again, getting it exactly right is not super important, um, but, but getting it about these dimensions is good. Now what you're gonna do with these two sheets of paper is you're gonna tape them into a circle. Now, one of the things that is kind of important is you don't want both circles to be exactly the same diameter or the same size. You want one to be a little bit bigger than the other. And how much different they are is up to you. And it, sometimes it's fun to kind of experiment to make one way, way bigger than the other, um, make them a little bit closer in size to each other. These two that I've, I'm showing you are fairly close in size together. So maybe I might make this one a little bit smaller. But the airplanes tend to fly a little bit differently uh, if, 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 you, if you change the relative size of these two circles. So go ahead and tape these and tape them into a circle like this. Go ahead and tape both of them in a circle like that. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna tape them both to the top of the straw. Now you remember I talked to you about what different factors are that can cause an experiment to be different variables that can cause it to, to um, work or not work or just work differently. So one of the variables or factors that you want to make sure that you do is can you see how these circles, when you're looking along the length of that straw, you can see through both of them? You don't want one to be way down here and one to be way up here. You want them pretty close to being in line. Now, if they're slightly out of line, that, that's okay. I mean, you don't, you don't have to be a perfectionist about it. But in general, 
uh, you will get better results if, if, if they're roughly in line with each other. And also if, they're, if they're, they vary a little bit in size. But you, again, you might have fun really figuring out with really big ones, really, really, really teeny ones, varying sizes in relation to each other. So uh, before we fly this one, let's go back to our paper rocket. Okay. So um, it, it looks like we're having a little bit of trouble where we're not getting comments um, from viewers. So I'll answer my own question. So the, the, the reason that the plane flew and that, or that rocket flew, and the reason that the rocket flew this way is because when I blew into that straw, I produced thrust. And that, that air blowing up against the inside of that sealed uh, uh, straw, that created the thrust, that force created the thrust. And that pushed that wing forward, okay? Now, when I did that, guess what? the air rushed over that wing and created lift. And that's why it, it flew forward. Now it eventually did hit the ground and that's because my thrust was just a single, just a single, you know, you know, push. Now if, if I was chasing behind this thing and continually blowing into the straw, it would, con you know, if there was a way for me to continually create thrust on this thing, it wouldn't fall as fast. But since the only thrust is just that quick puff, right? That's that's why it eventually the, the 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 wind resistance or the drag overcame that thrust. Then I didn't have any lift, and 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 then gravity took over and pulled it to the ground. So, ah, okay. So we did get an answer. Um, Riley flew to Colorado. That's a really pretty place, Riley. I, I'll bet you liked it. Um, let's see here. Um, so now, now that we've got our, our paper airplane all built, um, I'm not going to tell you. Just watch me. And I'd like in your comments for everybody to make comments to, to, to tell me where they think the thrust for this airplane came from. So ready? I didn't let go. Ready? Okay, it's probably hard to see. I'm going to try to throw it past the screen here. Ready? Okay, so you saw it zing past, and you saw that it let go from my arm. So that is everything I had for today. And Harry has wandered away. His, 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 uh, his, uh, attention span was not quite as long as yours, but guess what? Daisy hung in with us. So let's say goodbye. I'll have Daisy. Come here, Daisy. I'm going to have Daisy. Whoop. I'm going to have Daisy help me say goodbye. Can you say goodbye, Daisy? Bye. Bye. <laughs> so long, girls. <laughs>